blood's power I summon you. With your name I beseech you. Hear my call and arise, Dea. Lead me to those bound to you by blood. days. Head torn clear off. Takes incredible strength. Horseshoes missing. Is this the animal that lost one in the smokehouse? Giant claws. Wasn't a necrophage made these marks. Must have been attacked by a powerful beast. Surprised him. Hope they got away. Trail goes on. Good thing it doesn't end here. Look. Who's that? At the room. Go on now. What you seek here, sir? Our hut's out of the way. Woeful. We has nothing. We knows nothing. Just need information. Looking for two women, the Bloody Baron's wife and daughter. Not a soul have been here, sir. Sure? Not even passing through? Daughter's medium height, about 20. Her mother's thin, about 40. Seen them? 
That's her came at night, right, Mummy? Quiet, boy. I want to help that woman. She could be in danger. Young and see no one, my lord. He's a kitty. Must have dreamt it. I want to hear this dream then. So, kid, who did you see? Who came here? Pappy brought her at night. The lady does the medicines. She was all afeard. Talked about an awful monster. Said she had to go back. Don't know where to. Mummy and Pappy cheered her up. Gave her clothes. Hers were ragged. Where'd the girl go? Your son said enough. No point in playing dumb anymore. Sorry, sir. But you don't look like one of her father's men. Because I'm not. I'm looking for Tamara and her mother. I need to know if they're alive and safe. Tamara is hi. She's to my brother's place in Oxenford. But Mrs. Anna, that's another tale. Though anywhere is better than to crow's perch with a baron. Why? Cause... Cause he beat her, sir. Beat Mrs. Anna, I mean. Everyone knew, but not a one lifted a finger for to stop it. What happened to Tamara's mother? Ah... For like this. I was awaiting in the old smokehouse with horses. Cold as hell and so dark, couldn't see past two L's in front of you. Moon had arisen high, and still they hadn't come. Began to fear some demon had snatched them. But finally they came forth, and we set off towards the river. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a gale arose. Thought it'd tear my head off. And those damn birds, swarms of them coursing o'er the woods, raising the racket to make your ears bleed. Mrs. Anna screamed, bent over into herself. Tamara knelt down, gripped her arms. But then I saw it. Fiery marks on her hands. What marks? These, well, like burned on with hot iron. On the palms, inside. Burned? Like a cattle brand? Aye. Though these wasn't black scars scabbed over. They's hot and glowing, as if they burned with raw fire. Why help them at all? You risked a lot. I the deck. Old Miss Tamara. Three moons passed, a fever gripped my boy. We thought he was done for. Tamara learnt it. Brought food and salves. We're poorer than dirt itself. She saved my boy. No two ways about it. Me, myself, I'd have never dared to help. But my missus told me, a time of war and contempt's come, a time of folk gone wrong. We needs to repay good with good. Who stands by idly does evil as if. Married a wise woman. Crying shame we couldn't save Mrs. Anna in the end. Fine, what happened next? Grew even darker. Seemed someone had put out the stars. Crickets all went silent of a sudden. And then, from the woods, a roar. Broke out in a cold sweat. And before I could catch my breath, a beast jumped out of the woods, big as a barn, with horns and two burning coals for eyes. I thought I was done for. Beast attacked Mrs. Anna's horse, ripped its head off, carried her off into the woods. Our horses, mine and Miss Tamara's, got spooked and tore off willy-nilly. It was the only reason we escaped. The miss wanted to go back for her mother, but my wife pleaded, said she'd die out there alone. Miss Tamara agreed not to go. While back, I met a woman in Crookback Bog. Had fiery marks on her skin like the ones you described. Must be her, Mrs. Anna. Gods. She to crook back bog. It's where I saw her last. Gods of all the heavens protect us. Tis clear now who's whispered to her in the night. It is. The crones took her. She must have made a deal with them. A pact. It's why they marked her and took her like she was their own. Thanks for your help. The lady. She'll be all right in the end, won't she? I'll do what I can to see that she is. So here I am.
here our paths diverge. Thank you, Dea. Go in peace. Slow now. Whoa. Oh, look, we got ourselves a customer. Not about to buy anything from you. Uh, afraid you're mistaken. If we're to let you pass, you gotta pay. And if I don't? <laughs> then you die. Comes, ha, ha, ha. Creamy near bubble gun. What you got in the pot? Oh, super la cops, trolls all family. Much goods, <laughs> slings, froggies, bone helps, choice smell sticks. Last one necro for flavor full. Putting Neckers in your soup? Is that why they got mad? Necro one! Do no soup taste good! Necros are those come, but mine no call them. Well, you put one of their brothers in the pot. It's natural they'd be a bit... upset. Oh, the soup wanting to? Jealous is... No, it's more like... Many gods now? Many much for soup? You may be! Necras good as rotten! More saucy! Ah! Kind, nice man! Troll help! Take! Award! This is the head of an elf. Elf is good! Like Timito! <laughs> Passage. Case of the plague surface in the city or something? The plague? Uh, no. We're to not let folk in the city. It's in order, so I don't, unless someone's got a pass. Who ordered the city gates closed? Word is the king himself. Doesn't want paupers and refugees pissing all over his beautiful city. Apart from which, when folk can go hither and thither, always a chance some spy will slink through. This way, spies got it harder. So, no pass, no passage. What kind of pass are we talking about? Well, a normal one. A transit pass. Who issues them? How should I know? I'm a lowly soldier. Farewell. Evers is slowly ready. I'm fine to you anywhere else. Interest you in a pass. Cheapest around. Right here. What kind of pass are we talking about? You don't know. Redanians hold all the fords across the Pontar. Can't get through with our pass. But you're in luck. So happens I've got a few to sell.
What? Could dress up like Radovid and buy a gilded carriage for that much. What am I to do if you can't afford it? No deal. Whoa, 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 hold up. Might have a little work for you. Reduce the price for a job well done, eh? What kind of work? Nearby. Just to the southeast. My sister's husband's got a business. He and some lads tidy up battlefields. Problem is, there's always swarms of shite bothering them, you know, in monsters drawn to corpses. Give them some protection, and I'll swing you one beautiful discount. All right, see what I can do. Oi, hey there, come here! What is it? Got work for you, because you look to me eyes like a witcher. Am I right? What do you need? Need for my men to finish their work unharmed. But we got corpse seekers coming out all the while. Rid us of them, and we'll give you a share. Deal. Good Witcher. Here, your share for your toil. Mm. Oh, you again. Looking for a pass? I've got a special price for you. What's your offer then? Because I already ran into your brother-in-law. He and his men can work in peace. Ah, well then, that changes everything. That's better. Pleasure doing business with you. Whoa! What's going on here? Why isn't anyone putting that out? We want it to burn. Got it? Piss off, or we'll fry you along with a fucking elf! There's a third way out of this situation. Fast.
was this about? Why'd they want to burn you alive? They came to rob me. I refused to betray where I keep my valuables, so they brought in a cart full of firewood, barred me inside, and set fire to the thing. Probably counting on you being swayed. Though I doubt they would have let you live even if you talked. I've yet to thank you for your aid, Vatgern. My coin lies concealed in a hollowed-out stump behind the house. Take what you wish. It's dangerous to possess too much in these times. Thank you. Farewell. Long live Radovid! You need to present the pass if you want to cross. This way, you mean? Let me look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, missing a seal, the red one. Impossible. Department of Civil Defense forgot again. They're really off their heads these days. If it happens, so be it. You may come through. for Tamara, the Bloody Baron's daughter. Your brother said I'd find her here. Voitak sent you, sir. How else would I know she was here? Wait a moment. I'll fetch her straight away. might you be? My father sent you? Yeah, to see if you're still alive, and well. I'm Geralt of Rivia. I'm quite alive and extraordinarily well, Geralt of Rivia. Better than I've ever been in this rotten life of mine, and now that you've seen me, I bid you farewell. Wait. We've nothing more to talk about. Got every right to be angry at your father, but he's worried about you. I have a right! Thank you kindly. So good to have the approval of his hired thug. And my father worries only about what to get soused on next. He's no saint, that's clear. But he's got the whole province on its feet looking for you. Finding you and your mother? Seems to me there's nothing more important to him now. I know evil men. He's not one of them. Shame he never showed such concern before. Especially for my mother. He made a mistake and knows that. I'm not defending him, just saying that maybe he's come to realize what he's done, and what you mean to him. Oh, wonderful. I'll bear that in mind. Did you really come all the way here just to tell me that? Before I agreed to look for you, your father told me his version of events. Tell me yours. Mine? It's dull as life amidst the swamps. My earliest memories are of a drunken father lying under the stairs, caked in mud and clutching a bottle. Next dozen years, pretty much the same. Father would drink, disappear for days, then come home in a rage and send furniture flying. Thank the gods for war, I was glad every time they sent him off. And the quarrels. I remember him screaming at mum, the thuds as he beat her, then her sobbing. I'd hide under my bed and long for silence. 
That's the long and short of it. Multiply by 19 and there you have my life. Finally, we'd had enough, Mum and me. He crossed the line and we fled. I don't mean to pry, but I know your mother had a miscarriage. His doing? He shoved her, she fell, that's how it started. We were alone, no one to help, blood everywhere. Worst night of my life. Sorry, must have been hard for you both. Mum was in shock, she was raving that it was better this way, that she never wanted the child. Must have had a fever. She was losing blood the whole time. She didn't want the child. Said she'd sooner cut open her gut than bear another child from his seat. Voitek said some monster carried off your mother. That is what happened. It was enormous, twice the size of a bear, but much quicker and more agile. It grabbed Mum before we could react. Now I don't even know if she's alive. Your mother's in Crookback Bog. Seems quite happy, actually. Though I think she's not quite right in the head. What? She lives! I must go there at once and get her out! Wouldn't recommend venturing into the swamp. I've made my decision! Won't let anyone talk me out of it! What will you do now? Find my mum. You realize that might not be that easy. Don't worry, I'm not daft enough to believe I can do it alone. I've got some new friends now. Powerful friends. They'll help me. What about your father? Who? Oh, him. I don't care. I won't go back to him. That bit of my life? Forgotten it already. Who are these friends, if it's not a secret? No secret. Heard of the Church of the Eternal Fire? A priest helped me contact the Redanian witch hunters. Righteous, brave men. They'll help me. Hence the candlesticks in your room. So you believe in the eternal fire? Once the heat of the fire has set your heart aflame, it gives you strength and leads you down the path of truth for the rest of your life. I hope it'll bless you with its warmth one day. Thanks. Thing is, fire's tricky. It's easy to get burned. Well, well. <laughs> a witcher. Never thought the Baron would stoop to hiring a monster slayer. Though I hear you're good at tracking things down. Desperate fathers have been known to do a lot to find their daughters. Unexpected from a witch yet. <coughs> I thought your mutations cleansed you of humanity. Stripped you of emotions. You don't need mutations to strip men of their humanity. I've seen plenty of examples. Glad you know who I am. Haven't introduced yourself, though. Graden, witch hunter in the service of His Royal Majesty Radovid of Redania. I'm certain you've heard of us. Rings a bell. If the Bloody Baron sent you to fetch his daughter, you'd best face it. You will fail in your task. I appreciate your concern, but I don't need it. As for tomorrow, she can make her own decisions. Hmm. <coughs> Noble of you. A killer for hire abandoning his bounty for the good of another. The Hunters and the Church of the Eternal Fire thank you. Where are you going to take her? Tamara must rest. She's had a harrowing experience. When the warmth of the eternal fire has restored her strength, we shall see about finding her mother. Hope you know what you're getting into. I've never been more certain. The eternal fire is the best thing that could happen to me. In that case, good luck. Thank you for respecting my choice. Farewell. Another step, or there'll be one corpse more. Listen, I... Behind you. If you think I'm gonna fall for... Oh, you fucker.
If not for you, that would have been the end of us. Sure as spring. Hey, you! Halt! Geralt of Rivia, correct? You were in White Orchard recently. Near Vizima. Mm hmm Charming village, if you don't mind rotting corpses. There'd have been one more if not for you. Lena, she survived, thanks to your potion. Nice to see an elf guardian soldier so concerned about the fate of some simple Nordling. But kind of surprising, too. That night, when the griffin attacked her, she was on her way to meet me. In the woods, near the garrison. Love knows no bounds. Not so. Her parents told her that if they saw her with a Nilfgaardian, they would shave her head, cut out her tongue, and banish her from their home. Listen, Lena, she has not fully recovered. I took her with me when I was transferred, thought she might get better. But no, she says nothing Recognizes no one. Sleeps most of the day. I warned Tamira. Witcher potions have powerful, usually permanent side effects. Can't do anything to help now. Maybe a mage could. I don't know whether to thank you, or curse you for not letting her die with dignity. Trust me, the choice I had to make was harder. Standing Jew! I challenge you! Boots a bit big, maybe? Careful not to trip. Halt, I say! I am Ronvid of the Small Marsh, bound by a sacred oath. Oh, that's rough. My sympathies. To honor made Bilbury, fairest of all maids I know, by dueling a hundred knights to the death. Now, draw your sword post haste. But I have 99 left after you. Hmm. Why are you challenging me? Don't recall doing anything to offend the maid Bilberry. Well... Why... Um... Then swear. Swear! Maid Bilberry's the most loveliest of all. Thing is, I've never laid eyes on her. Aha! Ah! I shall wash your scorn away with thy blood fiend. Stand and fight. You know, I yield. Had enough? Yes, luck stood with you. But, but the next time we meet. Go back to Maid Bilberry and apologize for being an ass. Quick before I change my mind and break your bones. We shall meet again. Remember me? Stable hand pulled you out of the fire. We'll never forget that. Here, I'm grateful. Witcher, a word, please. What is it? That night when the Baron ordered everyone to lock their doors, stay inside. What did you and the Baron do? Gotta ask the Baron about that. Speaking of which, know where he is? Garden. Spends a lot of time sitting there of late. Drunk? No. Don't drink, don't eat. Just sit. Got any vodka? There you are. See the hollyhock there? The violet blooms. Brought the plants here from Nazaire. Anna had read some story. Insisted on having them. Spent hours tending to them, trimming, pruning. 
She was so content at that. And them, the frilly ones, called birds of paradise in Zeracania. But Tamara called them dragons of paradise. She adored them. Damn shame I'll never learn which blooms would please Dea most. Though it's good to know her spirit's free. Your loss. It must hurt. Bad. But there wasn't anything we could do. No. Not now. Not anymore. It was too late. That was clear. Should have acted earlier? Taken them all from this damned villain? In this hole? This reesty mire? Nothing could go right here. Got some information about your family. You've learned something? Well, let's go inside. It's a bit chilly out. Any news for me? Your daughter's in Oxenford. What the blazes? Is she all right? In good health? Safe? Why haven't you brought her back? Never offered to do that. How do you know she's safe? You see her at least? I saw her. We talked. She said I could tell you she's safe. When will she come home? And that she's not coming back. She's not to return. But I prepared all for her. Her rooms are white. I sent away for new pantoblas from Toussaint. How can she not come back? She's not coming back, period. And I don't blame her. I wouldn't want to return to a home like this either. Ah, horse bugger, you blind! I know what you think already. You've no need to repeat it. I've not been a good father, I know, but... Perhaps it's not too late. Can always try. Wouldn't count on succeeding, though. I've nothing to lose. Very well. You were to find them both. What of Anna? Learned anything? We'll talk about her, don't worry. But right now, you'll tell me about Siri, just like we agreed. <sighs> Fine. A word once given. When Siri was on the mend, we took her out on a hunt. Thought a bit of galloping would warm up her limbs, gone stiff from so much bed rest. 